students today i'll be discussing about damage assessment which is in module 4 of audit course disaster management in this lecture i included the concept and what's the significant and uh, and level of damage assessment and the types of damage assessment and type uh, different types of reports uh, and we will see what is damage assessment damage assessment is an important tool for surveying and prospective analysis of disasters to assimilate the extent of impact of a disaster this forms the basis uh, for future disaster preparedness and preventive planning it is essential in determining what happened what the effects were uh, which areas were hardest hit of a disaster what situation must be given priority and what type of assistant are needed all these are based on this uh, damage assessment it will be helpful in future uh, for the mitigation purposes so emergency response can be more effective equipment and personnel can be better used and help can be provided quicker if uh, a thorough damage assessment is performed beforehand we will see the basic objective of damage assessment the objectives of damage assessment are to make a rapid assessment of areas affected to uh, areas affected uh, to know the extent of impact for the purpose of immediate rescue and relief operations and to prepare estimates for the amount of relief to be provided and mode of relief uh, be it food clothing medicine shelter or any other commodities and this this disaster assessment uh, used to make a uh, requirements uh, for long term relief and rehabilitation planning and uh, this disaster assessment uh, is to identify focus areas for the purpose of retrofitting actions uh, in similar future situations we will see the essential features of disaster uh, sorry damage assessment flow of information there is a clearly defined sequence uh, to managing information first is converting raw data to useful information and information input sorting that is or that is grading collating or disregarding what is unreliable and evaluation uh, next is decision making and information output or dissemination and finally the action these are the uh, essentials uh, of a damage assessment we will see the levels of assessment damage assessment is required at two basic levels of intervention firstly it is required for emergency relief measures in which quick ass assessment of damage is the basis of amount of relief material and food stocks that reach the each area each disaster area this type of assessment is called rapid damage assessment the official agency for reporting the estimates of disaster uh, damages is usually the revenue or relief department of the state government as they are also the authority of distributing relief uh, to the affected persons as usual there is a hierarchy of officials who report from the lowest level of villages or panchayat through the uh, block or revenue circles and taluks and subdivisions and finally 
to the districts and then to the state court headquarters. However, relief agencies including NGOs also have their own damage assessment systems and uh, those teams carry out their assessments. So the basic items covered in rapid assessment are uh, there, there is a list that is uh, there in the rapid assessment uh, damage assessment the list is like uh, the name of the place the causative disaster date and time of the uh, disaster stri uh, strike and areas affected and total number of villages or neighborhoods affected total population population affected in terms of number of people in the case of flood the area is still under water and in the case of earthquake or cyclone uh, the damaged uh, uh, buildings and infrastructures affected etc next level of assessment uh, is a detailed technical analysis of damage for a long term restoration and rehabilitation works from a long term per perspective uh, damage assessment scrutinizes the mechanisms of failure that took place during the disaster. So it is called detailed damage assessment. This detailed damage assessment uh, goes further than this rapid assessment and it includes uh, the information of uh, the uh, livestock lost uh, details of damage to crops uh, that is in hectares and in uh, estimated value of uh, a value of uh, infrastructure lost uh, the rough estimate of financial lost etc we will see the types of damages in order to perform an effective damage assessment, one must know various types of damages that are required to be taken into consideration. First is damage to building. The damage caused uh, to the buildings by various disasters that may be categorized uh, as the, the loss of the main building, the loss due to the failure of other components whose damage is attributed to this main uh, building damage an area covered by the collapse of this building and death or injury to life due to the building collapse uh, loss of revenue during this uh, ideal period so damage to house structure can be caused the resultant damage to households uh, goods uh, artisan assets and other productive assets stored in that house so these uh, need to be accounted uh, for in terms of average value of damage uh, per house that is in uh, have to see in rupees how much how damage caused uh, by this building uh, collapse and next is damage to land damage to land due to a uh, disaster could be short term damage as in uh, this may uh, due to the uh, covered by the debris of silt and the loss of standing crops or else it could be a long term damage as the loss of productivity of land. So the most important uh, post disaster scenario in the aspect of agriculture loss through a land uh, destabilization. So the crop damage is assessed in the terms of percentage of households reporting the damage under the following uh, heads that is the area damaged per household that is in hectares and the production loss per hectare that's uh, quintals uh, and the production loss per households uh, it is uh, calculated in quintals and value of production loss per hectare and value of production loss uh, per household. So all these uh, done in damage assessment in the case of damage uh, of land. And next is impact on human lives. 
The most disastrous and immediate impact on human lives is in terms of loss of lives uh, by death that may occur due to the direct impact of a disaster or uh, through the indirect impact as in the case of building collapse, fires, etc. So the injuries uh, are the second level of impact of a disaster on human lives and that result from the same source of as deaths. The impact on lives in terms of death and injuries has to be estimated, not only in numbers but, al but also in the terms of the expenses incurred due to the death or injury, as also the loss of productivity of the person affected due to the death, illness or disability. The next category of damage uh, is to damage to lives livestock. The damage to livestock, uh, namely cattle, other animals, poultry, uh, which are a very important asset for rural households, is generally assessed in terms of the number of households reporting uh, loss and the uh, and per household value of livestock lost in terms of rupees have to estimate. And we will see uh, damage reports. The information uh, at various stages of uh, the disaster assessment process is in the form of different reports. The reports vary in terms of their timing and detailing. So the major report uh, types of reports are flash report, sometimes called first information report or SOS report. Flash report should be submitted very quickly. Its purpose is simply to confirm that the disaster has taken place and that steps are being taken to cope with it and to give a first indication of the sort of uh, external relief that might be uh, required and to inform the sources that further reports would follow shortly. And next time, uh, is the initial uh, report. Initial report should follow the flash report as soon as possible within a matter of hours. Uh, its purpose is to inform the recipient of the severe uh, recipients of the severity of the disaster uh, and more importantly by relating the severity of the disaster uh, to the coping capacities and provide the information needed to start mobilizing resources from outside uh, the affected area for timely help. So the report should be the uh, summarized, brief summaries of the severity of the disaster action being taken locally, uh, local coping capacities, the uh, delivering that relief, the forecast, forecast of possible future development including uh, the new risk may happen in that disaster area. Next interim report, interim report should uh, built on uh, based on the earlier uh, reports providing uh, the additional and more precise information. Uh, to begin with interim report should be submitted every 24 hours at the same time every day at time being determined by the recipient according to the needs and thereafter at intervals decided by the recipient. As times goes by, the emphasis of interim report shift from needs for relief to the needs for rehabilitation and reconstruction. Uh, for example, repairs to damaged structures, uh, restoration of agriculture, uh, fisheries and industrial production. So all this done based on this interim report. Next kind of report is specialist or technical reports. A specialist provide the supplementary technical details uh, by a specialist. For example, engineers and officials responsible for emergency health care, uh, their reports. And final report, this is the summary of what happened, how the response was managed and the what are the lessons learned? All this included in the final report. So the damage assessment is an important tool for the information regarding the extent of a disaster's impact 
and the forms uh, the forms basis for immediate rescue and relief operation as well as long term rehabilitation and recovery programs so the rapid assessment techniques are applied for quick assessment and immediate relief detailed assessment damage assessment is a follow up of activity that is more elaborate and helps uh, to plan the long term interventions so damage is mainly in terms of human life loss uh, injuries disease livestock loss land and its attributes such as crops and structures infrastructures including building and road etc so assessment of damage is required in terms of area covered intensity of damage household affected and finally all this has to be converted in terms of economic loss and it's represented in terms of rupees lost and required for a restorative, uh, restorative activities so damage assessment reports are prepared at various stages of the disaster response process and provide various level of details depending on the time timing of assessment it is always advisable to have advanced preparedness of damage assessment and reporting systems and to have consistency in the approach and the format of the damage reports Uh, this goes a long way in ensuring good information communication leading to rapid and efficient disaster response that's all about damage assessment these are the uh, references and thank you for listening